Hey guys, uh, good afternoon. We're chugging along here, actually flying along really. We're on now 3.1.3 inputs. This is where the programming really starts getting juicy and exciting. Uh, we're actually looking at taking in information from the sensors and then making the robot do things based on those, based on those uh, inputs we get. So I listed right here, the questions that you have to actually do some type of coding for 6, 13, 17, 19, 23, 25, 29, 30, 37, and 39, quite a bit, quite a few different codes to write. Um, the ones I want you to send in evidence of their workings are the three that are listed right here, 13, 25, and 39. But fear not, these aren't super hard yet to uh, get them working. And a lot of them are kind of similar to each other. You just have to make a tweak or two. Uh, so that will hopefully not be an overburdensome task here. All right, let's dive in. We're going to write program six and, uh, and go from there. Here we go. So it, as per usual, kind of goes through the setup of all the motor and sensor. You should definitely do that. I'm going to quit doing that in the videos to save time. I'm just going to simply remind you uh, to make sure everything is good right here and then remind you to uh, open the sample program and open the right folder, all that stuff to get your program. Now, I'm going to have to apologize because in previous videos, I did not know this. We actually need to be saving things in a .c format. So when you go right here to save as, you know, in it, its natural thing right here is to save as a .rbg. We want to save it as a C file right there. So not a graphical file, a C file right there. Make sure to save it as that. Do we want to replace it? Sure. Let's replace it. Okay, so there you go. So make sure to save things as a .c, not .rbg. Otherwise, your stuff might not get saved. So there we go. So we've got all our motors and sensors set up. And we're going to jump right into writing the code here. So let's see. So remember the two slashes turn things green. And that means the robot is going to ignore it. So let's see here. Let's take a look. See, and uh, this one, it says until bump start the motor, then wait five seconds, then stop the motor. And we're going to be turning on the right motor. Okay, so let's see. So let's see, until bump, until bump right there. And then this is bump switch right there. Uh, uh, then let's see, start motor. And this is, we want to start the right motor. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe I want that moving at half speed right there. And then we're going to wait. Uh, we're going to wait five seconds. And then we're going to stop motor. Let's see. There it is. Stop motor. And then we'll do right motor, comma, 63. Okay, now what am I missing? I'm missing my semicolons. So let me go ahead and add those in there. Now let's just take a look at our code, make sure until bump, bump switch, start motor. Yep, all right, let's go ahead and run this thing so we can uh, compile and download a robot. I'm actually using FN and F5 key, which is the keyboard shortcut. And telling me I have some errors. Now the nice thing is this thing shows you exactly where your error is, which is on line 40. Too many parameters specified call to stop motor parameter na is uh okay so it's basically saying you don't need to tell me what a value of stopping a motor is you just need to tell me which motor to stop so there we go let's make sure to save it and then we'll recompile it here so anytime you change something you want to make sure to save then recompile and re-download it okay here we go we're starting up here everything's good you might have to click the start program let's make sure this is good right here i like this Right here when you click start it kind of shows you where you're at so it's kind of it's it should be up here really waiting until we hit the bump i'm just gonna chill out eventually i'm gonna hit that bump switch and we'll see what happens all right so there i just hit the bump switch i don't know if i saw this thing go to one or not uh, i wasn't really looking at it okay so there you go and you heard maybe you heard or maybe you didn't hear but the uh the motor did run for five seconds and then it did stop so that's good so let's start it again let me see if i i'm gonna keep my eye on the bump switch Hmm. I didn't see it go to one, but I know it did. It probably just went flash to one, flashed off real quick. Interesting that I'm, oh, there we go. So it just takes a while for it to register. You can see there when I really hold it down, it goes to one, but otherwise it just kind of stays at zero unless I like really hold it down for a while. So anyways, there we go. That's uh, program number six. 
Program number 13 is going to ask for something quite similar here. Uh, or number 13, you're just going to wait for the bumper switch to be bumped. Note that the bump occurs when the switch is pressed and released and not simply pressed and held. Okay. Both, both motors turn on at half power until the sensor is bumped again. Both motors should then move into reverse at half power for 3.5 seconds, and then both motors will stop. So you're going to have to use a couple of different commands. Here, you're going to have to use the until bump command twice in order to get that one to work. I'm going to let you guys write that one. Let's write uh, program number 17 together here. Before we do that, let's make sure we're all good with the program we just wrote. And that includes filling in our pseudocode. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to just say, let's see, program six, program, uh, well, let's call it program one. And then in parentheses, we'll do a uh, number six, number six right here. Okay, program one, number six. And then this will say upon, no, uh, wait until bump is pressed, then run motor for five seconds. Right? So I'm just filling in what the program does. So I want you guys to have this pseudocode filled out for every single one. Now, I don't want this program to be active anymore. So I'm just going to slash it out like that. I'm just going to add those two slashes. And then the robot's going to simply ignore that. So then I can get it back if I need to edit it or I need to run it again. But until that time, I'm just going to do that. And I'm just going to put everything on one program. That'll keep it more organized. And it'll keep me from having to, you know, reset up all the motors and sensors and everything. All right. So let's see. Program. And we're, we're letting you write 13. Okay. So we're on to 17 now. Uh, we're going to turn the LED on. And then we're going to uh, wait until the potentiometer is greater than 248 or sorry, 2048, and we're going to turn the LED off. Then we'll start the motor, wait 3.5 seconds, then stop the motor. Okay, so uh, let's see. Turn flashlight off. Oh, that's okay. Turn LED on. Uh, and then what is that? Green. I will remember my semicolon here. Okay. And then until potentiometer greater than, okay until potentiometer greater than and then i want to do 2048 comma and then what do we do we just call it potentiometer yeah potentiometer right there and then uh let's see turn oh i forgot my semicolon oh no why is it not working now comma or semicolon and then turn led off Ugh. turn LED off, and that is the green LED. And then we will run the motor for five seconds. Start motor, and let's do left motor, comma, 63. And then we'll wait five sec, wait 3.5 seconds, and then stop motor. Okay. So We'll put a semicolon, then wait 3.5, and then stop. Stop motor. There we go. And this is left motor. Okay. Now let's see. We forgot that semicolon right there, but other than that, I think we're good. Let's go ahead and end the program we're running. Let's save the file, control S, and then let's do an FN F5 to run and compile our program. Looks like we did it without any errors. And then as soon as it's ready here, well, actually before it's ready, I'm gonna twist my potentiometer right here. I'm gonna twist it. Oh, I got some cords in the way here. I'm gonna twist it. Why is this not rotating so freely? I'm gonna twist it down to zero, okay. So the potentiometer is at zero. So I am going to start the program. Now it turns my uh, turns out my LED is on. It's just waiting until that potentiometer gets to 2048. So I'm going to start spinning now. Oh, and there we go. We got to 4095. And then we ran the motor for three seconds. Okay, so let's stop this. Oh, 
Let me look at my potentiometer. It seems a little sticky. I think I was spinning the potentiometer potentially the wrong direction. Um, or maybe it's just kind of a sticky 